live from the YouTubes. It is Sunday and a bit of a random time today. I had to wait on that uh, Snyder Cut trailer to drop. And you know what? We're actually going to talk about that right off the bat here after we get to some of these questions. I want to thank everybody for joining me today, whether you're in the chat room, uh, you, you're, you're sending the super chats, you want to talk about WandaVision. It's a spoiler heavy video. So I just want to I want to say off the top, we're going to talk everything WandaVision today. We're talking about everything that has happened. So if you're not caught up, be sure to come back. You can catch this later on. Uh, but right now, uh, I just want to get into this show, man. It is such a fun show to talk about. We got everybody joining in the chats here. We've got Joel. We've got Fashionable Changeling. Alex, uh, I mean, everybody that comes weekly, if this is your first time, I appreciate we got someone from Thailand. That's awesome. Ryan, oh, Tool, the trailer was very cool. Uh, is it weird that I'm not sold on Leto's Joker being this? Yeah, we're going to talk about all of these crazy things. Uh, before we get into any of it, I want to start with the two super chats, but I want to int introduce uh, our very special guest, um, who is a man that is very close to me, my, my, my little heart, uh, a, a man that is uh, just very knowledgeable when it comes to comic books, and he's also related to me. Uh, my cousin, Joseph Burke, the man, the myth, the legend. Welcome, Joe. How you doing? This is actually my co-host on a little podcast <laughs> called Pop X Cast that we do every single weekend, and uh, you're also a comic book connoisseur, am I right? Well, that's a little bit of an understatement. I'm just going to lift the camera up. I'll let I'll let your Dude. audience uh, kind Look of. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> oh my, name my is, gosh, man! My name is Joe, and I have problems. No, but I <laughs> I love comics, dude. I am a huge comic book buff. I always have been. And dude, yes. it's just so good. Finally, you've been on my show for like what a hundred and some episodes. It's finally good to be on <laughs> your 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 broadcast now. Yeah. So this is so awesome. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for letting me be here. And I'm just so excited to talk Justice League, Snyder Cut, and WandaVision, and a lot of other things in between that. Dude, I'm just stoked. I have pulled out all of the memorabilia. And, and I'm sure, literally, if you were to look at, well, here, look, I got, yeah. I've got the comics. I, I'm like, I got, <laughs> I'm ready to go, dude. I'm He's ready, ready to man. pull from the bin today and, and actually bring out some some history, uh, some Marvel um, lore, yeah. some canon. Yeah. And we're going to compare and contrast the comics versus the show. Oh, man. Well, you're the perfect guy to, to, to bring on for this. A, because we got the Snyder Cut trailer a little bit earlier. Uh, and yep. B, because, you know, what WandaVision is doing is they're very heavily pulling from the comic books, but they're also kind of creating their own path. So being invested in both the lore of the comics and the universe, uh, it, it creates the perfect discussion between us because you are also, uh, tell everyone before we get into this for Super Chat here, Joe, tell everyone kind of your, your history of comics and you're actually a, a certified, I mean, you have a lot of credits. So it's not just <laughs> like do. he owns a lot of comic books. This man is actually, you know, he's he's taken the classes. He's been there. He's done that yeah. when it comes to comic books. Let him know, man. Oh, so, so basically, I started out as in comics uh, as a very uh, very early in my my childhood. I was a kind of a sick kid growing up. But one of the cool things about it, in the midst of all that craziness that I had in my childhood, comic books for me was the one constant thing that gave yeah. me kind of grounded me, and it allowed me to escape my own hell, so to speak. Yeah. And it, and it kind of like diving into the world of the X-Men, the Incredible Hulk, the amazing Spider-Man, and just all of these superheroes that just allowed me to escape my own world and go into the world of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby for a little oh. while. It was amazing. And so out of that, again, I, I'm self-taught artist. I, I taught myself how to draw and sketch and ink and um, all of that. So today I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I do comic book artwork. You can find that out. I will, I'll let Austin do other promo oh, if he yeah. wants to. But also, too, one of the cool things is I also am a certified pop culture historian. I had actually taken a class uh, a few years ago, and it was uh, through the Smithsonian and EDX. It was a Harvard uh, kind of uh, uh, thing that they did. It was a, it was a partnership program, uh -huh. but it w went back and explored the origins of Jewish settlers that came to the United States, mm -hmm. and they found their niche – because these were all refugees from the Nazi world of World War II, they found their niche in printing press, in the pulp wow. comics and pulp magazines of the old days in newspapers. And so from the comic strips came comic books. 
And so that is awesome. And so that's what I, I, I love to talk about, the history of comics. I go yes. all the way back to, you know, Siegel and Schuster who created Superman. Uh, it just, you know, I, I, there's, there's too much to unpack in one day, but you get the <laughs> idea. Yeah, man. And and I, I just like it because you're very knowledgeable. It wasn't just because you're you're my cousin and, and we're related, <laughs> but I just I think that you're the perfect guy to bring on to just go into spoilers with WandaVision, man. But uh, before we get into this, uh, this first super chat, by the way, and Joe, I'll let you uh, I'll let you pitch where they can find you on social media right after this. I do want to I do want to show off something. So my 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 cousin, Nathan, uh, who is, you know, uh, he is just the nicest guy. Uh, we text all the time. We're talking about WandaVision right now. He actually bought me this this Thanos figure uh, recently. It was actually his Christmas gift to me. Uh, nice. And uh, Nathan, I just wanted to give a shout out to you, man. Thank you so much for this gift. You know I love Thanos, buddy. Uh, and and uh, I hope I can I can repay you one of these days. Uh, he's actually bought me a couple of figures back there, but he got me this Thanos for Christmas. So Nathan, thank you so much. It's just a day of it's a day of uh, cousins, man. That's what it is. I'm telling you, cousins <laughs> are great, bro. They're great, man. So hey, Joe, real quick before we get to this first question, uh, where can people find you on Instagram, Twitter, and um, YouTube? All right. So if you guys want to find my artwork and everything that I'm involved with with production, art, media, broadcast, it's josephburke.com. J O S E P H B U R K E dot com. And I'm all over social media at Joseph Burke Arts. J O S E P H B U R K E A R T S. And also, awesome. we are the co host of Pop X Cast. So, there, you know, find us and we'll actually be doing a show next weekend. Uh, we'll be talking some WandaVision after the latest episode drops this Friday. Yeah. Coming. Yeah, we got a lot. We like a lot, of, a lot of great stuff on there, man. A lot, a lot of comic book talk. Uh, last week we covered the Blue Man Group, which is very close to your heart. Uh, some, mm -hmm. so some great stuff going on. But I, I don't want to wait any longer, man. I want to get into the first super chat that we had today. And thanks again, guys. If you guys enjoy this WandaVision live stream and you'd like to do maybe a recap at the end of the series, uh, drop a thumbs up and let us know. And uh, both of us would love to come back and talk about it when everything wraps up and we get the end of the madness morning star says hi i love uh the way how the creators of the show had the idea of going back in time from the 60s to present i'll start i i think that was a beautiful choice now not everyone was on board with that choice joe it is a you know my friend sam he was just over last night and we were discussing it and he actually was very hesitant during the first episode of WandaVision, he actually didn't make it through the first episode. And I had to say, listen, buddy, stick through, keep it going. We actually watched the end of episode one at my place last night just so I could show him. And when that weird tease happens at that dinner table, he said, oh, OK. So then we went through episode two and we watched the crazy things that happened. And he looked at me afterwards and he said, I, I wasn't on board. Didn't like it. And he's not alone. A lot of people feel that way. Um, but now he's very invested. And at the end of episode three, which we also watched, we 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 watched WandaVision all night last night. Um, he is definitely on board, man. He's he went right home to watch episode four. So Joe, what, what do you think about the choice to do the different decades in the first few episodes? Uh, dude, I gotta be honest with you, it really harkens back to my childhood because when I grew up in the 80s, a lot yeah. of the shows that we watched were reruns of like Mr. Ed bewitched <laughs> uh lassie i dream of genie you know the old black and white traditional ones yes so if you think about this wanda's kind of my age almost so she probably had the same kind of childhood in sokovia watching reruns on television so all yeah. that she knows and all that she's familiar with is literally the decades of the television she watched as a young child until she got captured by mm -hmm. you know hydra become a, a weapon essentially in ultron but the, the thing about it is, is it, it's interesting. It's, it, it's like you are literally piercing into the mind of Wanda and yes. you're seeing her childhood manifest in each episode of these shows. And you're seeing the decades of Wanda come yeah. out. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I, I think it's uh, and we're we're yet to know the exact reason, but I think exactly what you said is is the perfect way to describe it is. You know, Wanda sitting there, you know, I, I imagine them prying her eyes open to learn certain things to feed her information. But really, probably all she had was reruns of these old classic shows. Um, so I, I really love the idea of going back, you know, whether it be the creativity within the set design production, uh, giving them a chance to do their thing. I think Olsen has given a 
an Emmy worthy performance at this point. And Paul Bettany, when he had the chance to rise up at the end of episode four and show that anger, I just think it's all worked out so well so far. So uh, I, I love the choice Morningstar. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, and thanks to everybody for the super chats today. Uh, Brian asks a great question, Joe, I'll throw it to you. Do you think Aaron Taylor Johnson will return as Quicksilver? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> Man, I don't know. We, well, we've we've got the X Men Quicksilver right now, and and it's a it's a big question. Yes, I is. wouldn't count it. I wouldn't count it out. I I don't know. <laughs> we may have a cameo. I mean, if we can bring a robot back to dead, and we can bring, I, you never know, dude. I mean, you yeah. have this. This show is literally got every fan of Marvel on their seat. We don't know what to expect from each episode. We don't know who's going to drop in each episode. Yes, and. It's just leaving us all mind blown, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I, it's, you know, two episodes ago, I would have said, no, there's no shot. But then we get Evan Peters, you know? And, <laughs> right. Uh, and, and apparently he has inhabited, we don't know who he is exactly yet, but he has inhabited the mind of Aaron Taylor Johnson's Pietro. So did they actually recast? You know, we have our theories. We'll get into that. But I'm not going to rule anything out. At this point, I, I will not rule out one character, one decision, one house of him uh, uh, pulling from the comic books moment. So I think there is always a shot that Aaron Taylor Johnson, would I bet money on it? Probably not, right? Because yeah. we have Evan Peters. Uh, but I definitely think there is a good chance. I do want to acknowledge some other people in the chat. Everybody's saying, hey, Austin, uh, we've got some uh, some nice people. <laughs> Austin, uh, biggest fan. Can you say my name? Toe J man, what's going on, Toe J man? We've got Toe John. J yeah, you'll recognize John Joe, a fan of Pop John X Cast. What's up, yeah. dude? Yeah, it's our boy, and people saying hi, Joe. Two Burks for the price of one. Oh, that's Boom. always the best, man. You, that's always the best. Uh, so thank you guys so much for your chats. I know I'm just now getting to the super chats, but we're gonna keep answering them really quick. We do have a random one here from AJ Taylor. Joe, we like to do something called director swap on this channel. So mm. we'll try to keep it WandaVision specific today. But AJ Taylor has a director swap of swapping out the directors of the social network, which would now be directed by uh, Steven Soderbergh. And then David Fincher's Ocean's Eleven. Joe, out of those two choices, oh, which man. one would you choose? I, I got to go anything David Fincher. I don't think you can do the social network any better. So I would pick David Fincher's Ocean's Eleven. I, I would like to see his take on that. Uh, David Fincher's Ocean's Eleven for me as well. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's just phenomenal. Uh, it's it's just one of those movies I always keep going back to over and over yeah. again. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that that's an interesting one, AJ. Thank you for the super chat. We got procrastinators popping in and out uh, because I want to know nothing, uh, but I had to make a funny before I left. Anyways, back to doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I still have, thank you so That's much, so crafty. <laughs> love your super chat, man. Oh thank God. you so much. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Uh, alt, uh, Untamed Banana, which is my favorite name. Uh, thoughts on Cinema Paradiso. Untamed Banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's my favorite. Uh, untamed or, or Cinema Paradiso. You know, that's actually, I believe it was a, it was a late 90s film that I actually haven't seen. So Joe, have mm. you seen this movie? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. I've heard great things. I believe it's got like an eight point something, uh, almost a nine on IMDb. And I've heard phenomenal things, but I have not seen cinema Paradiso. So uh, yeah, Untamed Banana don't have a good answer for you, but I will definitely add it to my watch list. Same. Let's see if we got some questions in the chat before we dive deep into, uh, into WandaVision itself. Break the like button. Uh, Austin here, we have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why have some burgers when you can have some chickens? There we go. I like that. <laughs> WandaVision is great. Is X-Men really here? We'll dive deep into that here in just oh, a second, my yeah. man. It's going to be crazy. Alex says, hey, crew, Paul Bettany says that soon the show will have a secret cameo that is the Mandalorian finale returning characters. So on that level, right, that will change the MCU as a whole. Who do you guys think that character will be? Joe, we can start there. I think that's a great question. Who do you think the next, because apparently there's a Luke Skywalker level cameo at the end of this season. Who's it going to be? Um, well, I think it could be one of two people. Um, I think, honestly, it, it, it's either, well, let me get the, one of the obvious ones out of the way. I think it, it could be uh, Nick Fury of sort. It, cool. it could. 
That'd it be would because cool. if you remember at the end of Captain Marvel, I mean, I'm just kind of playing it safe on this mm. particular answer. I'm kind mm. of playing it safe on this, but at the end of Captain Marvel, who's walking around in the sword ship in the sky, true, doing his yeah. celestial stuff, Nick Fury. Now, yeah, we're talking about the astrophysicist, the guy who the engineer, um, yeah, that would be Reed Richards. <laughs> <laughs> and I would not be shocked if it is. Well, it could be very well Toby Maguire. I would be not shocked though if we see John Krasinski walk out with the four on his chest. Well, that's the only guy that <laughs> we wouldn't even. Honest to God, man, we wouldn't even have. They wouldn't have to say his name. They wouldn't have to say, "Oh, no. look, it's Reed Richard Richards," because we would all know at that moment that John Krasinski was playing Reed Richards. It's not like he's coming out and he's, uh, he's Spider-Man, right? And guess you know what? He's, going he's, to be Reed Richards. he's not been doing anything. John Krasinski, uh, it, he did A Quiet Place Part 2, but he's not yes. filmed Jack Ryan yet. So he's kind of, mm -hmm. and he's been doing his YouTube show, you know, good news. And so he's not been really doing anything. But, you know, I'm seeing the chat here. Toby, Toby would be crazy. I don't think Toby would be good. It, hey, Magneto, I mean, Guess what? Uh, you know, Magneto has a huge tie, direct tie to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. So yeah, yes, man, look at that. It, we got we got a lot of we got a lot of Magnetos. We got a lot of Mister Fantastics, and yeah, both I think valid. You know, we talked about the uh, the, the T's in the episode. Now, a lot of people were saying because you go into the audio captions, and I can't remember which country it is. One of the translations is actually a female that she was referring to, but then we mm -hmm. get the next episode, the name and drop. she said he. She yep. said he. So I'm like, okay, so it's it's got to be a guy, right? And who else? I mean, uh, aerospace engineer. That is, you look that up. You you type in aerospace engineer, Marvel. It pulls up Reed Richards. Uh, how do you use only that? There's only one other character that it could be, and this is okay. a very large stretch, would be Victor Von Doom. Um, that's a huge oh stretch, but <laughs> Doom, uh, Victor Doom and Reed Richards work together to form the, 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 the science and the, the evolution of the capsule that got them the powers as the Fantastic Four. So they worked hand-to-hand -to -hand together. Yes. But still, I'm pulling toward Reed Richards. Yeah, I, I am too. You know, originally I thought maybe because the character of Blue Marvel in the comics is an, is an engineer and he has a heavy connection to Captain Marvel. But again, you get that specific with aerospace engineer. I, I don't know why you would get that specific if you weren't going to introduce a character yeah. like a Reed Richards. Now, could, could this be a stretch and, and could they be waiting for the Fantastic Four? Absolutely. But... I just, it's so specific, Joseph. It's so specific. So I'm, I'm very curious. Matt says chances Monica's contact is John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. And I love this is that would break the internet. Jim finally meets Asian Jim from the office because we have with Jimmy Woo and then we'll have Jim, <laughs> which would be awesome. Uh, yeah, Matt, that's a great point. I love, I saw a meme recently um, because John Krasinski did SNL. And then that was the week that Jimmy Woo showed up and they said, man, Krasinski's had a great week because <laughs> it showed both pictures as John Krasinski. So that's that great. Me up. I the internet it was, wins again. Dude, the internet won so hard that day. Mike says, what up, Burke's significant observation from last episode for me was Agatha Harkness apparently not having control as we thought she did. So, Joe, what were your thoughts on Agatha? And, and again, she could have very well been messing with Vision because that witchy laugh, I said it in my reaction, that was a full-on witch laugh when she goes, <laughs> yeah. what do you think it about was, that scene? Well, she made the laugh when she was out of the hex. When Vision tapped her head, she True. was becoming herself. But as soon as she started losing it, you're dead, you're dead. Vision, yeah. Vision quickly snapped her back into the mental state that Wanda's controlling. Dude, I'm telling you, if, if, if Wanda is controlling Agnes... There, there, there's bigger questions that are at play. I mean, there, there's something going on. There's something not right. And yeah. I, I kind of feel like I, I, this past episode, even Quicksilver kind of felt very Pietro. He felt, I was like, what are you, why are you asking these weird questions? It's so strange. Yeah. And, and, and you, you've got the thoughts of, of the other Pietro and what is going on here? My brain is blowing up. And so it shows like this that literally 
I, I lose sleep at night because I'm sitting here. I know the comic canon, and I'm trying to compare and contrast. What in the world is Kevin Feige doing here on this show? Yeah, he, he really got us. You know, Evan Peters is spouting out like these demon kids and all these weird things that you would think, yeah. you know, would tie into a character like Mephisto. And Joe, we'll dive in. You actually have some some great. Yes, we will dive into that here in just a second. You actually had a um, a bit of dialogue that you were reading me earlier straight from a comic book that I think could pair very well uh, yes. with this show. But in terms of, of Ag Agatha's role right now, I, I was so convinced that maybe, just maybe, she was part of that control. She was part of, you know, what was pulling everyone's mind in a certain direction. But now, seeing that, and again, Marvel could easily be pulling our leg, seeing that, it makes me think that Wanda really is, if not 100, then at least 95% of what's controlling everyone's mind. So we know she's unaware of a few things because Pietro showing up really shocked her. So there's something at play there. But there's I'm curious to find play. out whether it's Mephisto or not. Um, I, I have a feeling that Wanda's powers is being used and yes. she, I have, yes. I have a feeling that she has been manipulated and we're going to find that out. Probably I'd say the last two episodes, it's when the crap's going to hit the fan and everything. Yeah. I, and I can't what, what, you know, we mentioned this too on our podcast pop X cast. We mentioned um, the last three episodes are where it's really, really like, this is the finale of what is to be giant movie so mm -hmm. you know things are going to get crazy john says i want to be an honorary burke y'all can teach me about comics i only know mcu yeah joe is the master of comic books you think jj watt is coming to pittsburgh oh man i hope so uh, I, you man. know i don't want to spend the money on him so i don't 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 spend the money on him, pittsburgh but if he's cheap yeah i'll take him i'll take him Hashtag, no, I mean, here we go here we go let's go yeah, joe, joe knows he's a he's a Steelers fan sorry if you hit yeah, um, sorry, but let's man. um but but let's Let's dive into some of that comic book stuff here in a little bit, Joe. I know you've got some great references. Yeah, and things um, like that. well, actually, you, you, some of the fans out there, I, I'm really going to be hearkening back to the early 90s on this one. But I have the complete set of the Series 1 Marvel trading cards. Now, these trading cards are really interesting. I'm not going to get to this guy yet, Baron Zemo. Uh, <laughs> that's another show for another day, but I may read something off of that. It's kind of interesting. But I found Mephisto. And I'm reading, I, all right, so I'm going to read the card, and then I'm going to read something else in another thing right below yes. right, my foot here. But um, um, Festo, all right, so here it is. He can change his height and size at will, um, mm. and his arch enemies are Silver Surfer and Thor. I repeat, his arch enemies are Silver Surfer and Thor. Yeah. Who is Silver Surfer tied to in the MCU? <laughs> yeah. Can you say Fantastic Four? Okay, yeah. uh, Mephisto is a physical manifestation of ultimate evil, uh, the malefic uh, master of dimension that many refer to as hell. He thrives on greed and hate and devotes his immortal existence to tricking unwitting humans into giving up their souls for eternity for his fiery domain. Now, although he has some awesome supernatural powers, he prefers to lure mortals to their doom by tempting them with those things in which they desire most when you play his game you bet your life straight from jack kirby and San lee now let's go into the handy dandy this is marvel great. encyclopedia yeah so, this is great mom momento por favor and so let me let me let me roll over here to good old mephisto Oh, Midnight. we can do it. We can, Mr. Fantastic. We're not going to talk about that right now, but we are well, going I to think go what, to what you said about is, is perfect because living out your fantasies, your greatest desires. I mean, isn't that what Wanda's doing right now? Isn't well, that what it, Wanda's doing? It is. And there's a, there's even one more little line here I want to read. All right. Now, this, it, we could totally be wrong on this Mephisto thing. I mean, we Absolutely. could totally be blindsided. I want to state that. All right, so check this out. He continually schemes to make bargains with people for their souls. Mephisto especially covets the souls of heroes for their purity and has repeatedly sought the soul of noble Silver Surfer. Mephisto has also contended with Thor, Doctor Strange, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, and many others. Yeah. Okay, okay here's, here's the line I want to get to right here. I love yeah, uh, this is what It was Mephisto posing as Satan who bonded 
the demon Zarathos and Johnny Blaze turning him into Ghost Rider. Mephisto literally created Ghost Rider. He also wow. held the soul of Dr. Doom's mother until Strange helped Doom free her. Mephisto had a son, Blackheart, and a daughter, Mephista. Here we go. The Scarlet Witch was, I repeat, the Scarlet Witch once was unwittingly used figments of Mephisto's soul to give life to her twin sons, and Mephisto's reclamation of these drove her mad. Recently, Mephisto made a deal with Spider-Man to save his Aunt May Parker in exchange for destroying his marriage to Mary Jane Watson. That's so, comic canon. You're you're making the deal with the devil. I mean, this is the Marvel's this is Marvel's version of the devil, right? Essentially, is, right? This this he is he is Beelzebub incarnate. So my question to you is, Joe, what is did, – did Wanda make a deal, or is this an unwilling thing? Did she make a deal? You know, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, Tom McCannon, um, she did make a deal. Um, I, I, man, it would, be in, it would be insane, but according – Kevin Feige is Mephisto. <laughs> 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 uh, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting, though, because it seems like a lot of this stuff is pointing in that direction. But again, Marvel has a way of just toying with us to a point where we think something in, in specifically, and then at the end of it, we're just completely blown away. It could be Mephisto. And then again, it may not. I don't know. I don't know who the enemy is here. But with the twins in play, the twins yeah. now being a part in that, and how do the twins come into existence? The only way is Wanda would have stole a fragment of Mephisto's soul to create the twins, essentially. That is comic canon. Well, it's like you have to have some, and I guess with Wanda's powers and the way she can manifest things, you have to have some sort of explanation of how the twins are alive, how they're surviving, well, how they're actually existing. Go ahead. I was just going to say, she stole from Mephisto first. That was the act of engagement. So if, if it's lining up with the comics, she stole wow. the fragments first. So, so essentially, she I mean, I... It. What you're saying is, to me, I, I don't know how Mephisto's not at play here. I wonder how he's not at play. It's a how hard you argument. All of this? It's yeah. a hard argument to not, I mean, it's a hard argument not to have him in here. Um, and I would honestly, at this point, if he's not even a part of it, I would kind of be disappointed because it would be going away from comic, comic canon. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. sure I would be excited either way. I don't care Mephisto or not. I think I'll be excited. But um yeah, uh, that's the way I'm feeling. Is, is I think there's something more here at play, and it's going to come out. We got a few episodes left, so you know, crap's going to hit the fan essentially. Yeah, and I I love how it's uh, what John says here. You know, continuing to build speculation every, every mm -hmm. single week, and I I like just to offshoot really quick. I like that Marvel is going this route with the weekly. And and listen, I'm not a patient person when it comes to things like this. Like I love getting it all at once, but. To see that they are in the now uh, on Twitter, trending all over social media every single Friday, I think is is the perfect way to keep it in the conversation. And it does throw us back to a show like Lost. It it really does. But it um, is, yeah, and I, I want to show you too. This is the comic. Yes, that inspired Wanda Vision, and so this is Vision and his family in Serbia, America, and so this and House of M literally are, are the catalysts that created the show that we all love right now. So Joe, um, tell us a little bit about that real quick, that comic book. So obviously house of M is a great reference for what the show is pulling from. What is that comic all about? All right. This comic specifically is all about what would have happened if vision retired in suburbia America. And he created clones of himself to live wow. out the, the, his life. Well, in this case, you know, we don't need clones in the MCU specifically vision. So yeah. we insert Wanda, and Wanda is his love, and vice versa. So, but this this comic specifically has some very crazy. There's some very dark moments in this comic. There's some funny things. There's Vision in his uh, suit attire going to work. <laughs> We've Just seen like that, right? Show? Yeah. And and then um, also too, at the end of it, there's some very darkness. It, it's almost this is almost like a Twilight Zone comic, Ooh. in a way. So it's, and, it's and, very. And what is the, what is the exact feel that we get from WandaVision? I, I think it's Twilight Zone, especially the first three episodes, right? 
You are correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, essentially we're pulling from two major stories. Cause I think that, you know, not a lot of people talk about that specific comic book. I think house of M it's very obvious that, you know, Wanda losing her mind and how it could all tie in. You know, we could introduce the X-Men. I know there's an ongoing theory, which I actually talked about like three weeks ago. Uh, I wasn't the first one I'm sure, but there's an ongoing theory that within this portal, within the hexagon that she has, that this force field, um, there is an idea that the mutants could possibly be created in the Marvel Universe, all 3,000 people or some of them. Uh, this could be unlocking the mutant gene. Joe, what, what is your thoughts behind that theory? Could the mutants spawn from one of it? Well, well, here's, you know, before I answer that question, look yeah. at Vision. See that? Oh, that's awesome. He's in, his, he's in his suit and tie getting ready to go to work. Hey, look, now, it's got the little the little living room. Yeah. It's just like the look sitcom. It. It's, it's, I told you, dude. And this is a, the Vision's number one. And um, but they're here. I'm going to show you the Twilight Zone. Spoiler alert. Hold on. Yeah. I'm yeah, show yeah. You the dark. Then I'm going to answer your question on mutants because I Absolutely. really want to dive into that. I think that's a very crazy question. And this could be the dark part of it. Vision's daughter getting impaled in a night in, in kind of a nightmarish scene. Oh, my. Goodness. So so there's there's that. Now, wow. Darcy's Darcy said something to Rambo that created it's kind of an on-ramp. Every yeah. time you enter the portal, your genetic code is rewritten each and every time. It's got to be mutants, right? It's got to be mutants, bro. And so is this bubble going to expand to be the entire world or just a small area? Uh, oh, oh, man. man. I haven't I thought know. about the entire world. Oh, buddy. Oh. <laughs> so oh, no. if, she, if she's able to expand, you know, in the house of M, Charlotte Witch, Wanda went completely off her rockers, dude. She lost all sense of reality in touch with who she was. It was a crazy story. And I'm not going to spoil House of M for you because I think you've never read that. You can buy it at a graphic novel right now at your local comic yes. book shop. Yeah. But you need to – you need or digitally buy it on your iPad or your iPhone. And um, you can read that because it literally will paint a larger picture of what's going on. And you can understand Wanda Maximoff a lot better. I want to go back to something you said just now that really sparks my – uh, and I'll go ahead and pull up the super chat. We'll get to it in just a second. But you said, what if Wanda expands the hexagon to where it entraps? Now, obviously not everyone within that, all 3,000 people. I mean, it's a possibility, right? But if it were to expand even further, right, that would, in certain people, unlock the mutant gene. And in my opinion, that could be a great lead-in to a Doctor Strange 2 multiverse of madness, being Doctor Strange maybe has to travel to different multiverses to find a way to fix what Wanda has done. So what are your thoughts on the fact that Wanda could, you know, eventually create that and expand this even further? Because we saw it move even further in the last episode. Now, does it stop there? Or does it just keep on moving? I haven't considered that possibility until you brought it up just now, Joe. Well, I mean, if even if it does expand um, beyond the entire reaches of Westview, uh, which it already has, let me let me back that up. Uh, it could go to the entire globe. Like there's something chaotic and traumatic that happens, and Wanda right now her her mental state is on a teeter totter. Uh, she, mm -hmm. uh, something is going on. We don't know what it is. She's being controlled and manipulated. I feel. Uh, bring in Howard the Duck. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, who's to say that her powers couldn't reach a level? Kevin Feige did say that she is the, one of the most powerful individuals in the MCU. Uh, yes. And, and, and if, if that's true and if that's tangible, um, then she has the power to be able to create that bubble around the entire globe, affecting certain individuals and rewriting their DNA. And if their DNA is written, then hey, look out. We've got we've got something crazy going on there. We absolutely do, and, and I think that's one of the perks of bringing you on. Is 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 you know the idea, the possibilities of this show pulling in a lot of things from the comic books is awesome. But it's also uh, you know they're going to have to find a way. And we don't know that way yet, but they're going to have to find a way to introduce mutants because you know. When the X, when the Fox X Men universe started, mutants were already a thing. They were just in hiding, right? Um, mm -hmm. And maybe you know, in the MCU, 
They've always been there. We've just never known. But I don't think that's the case. I, I think you have to unlock that gene, right? Turn something on within these people. And I think this is a great way to do that. And it ties in perfectly because Wanda is a mutant in the comic books. And I was and ready to Quicksilver. say Wanda. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. No, Wanda and Quicksilver are already a mutant. Yes. They're already part of the mutant gene. They're, they're, I mean, they have been in and out of members of the X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men and X-Force for, I don't know how many, you know, comics and stuff. I can pull yes. it right here from, from my vat, but um, it, 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 mutants are already in. Maybe Wanda. Wanda is the first yeah. mutant that unlocks the potential for global mutants. Yeah. So, Ooh. you know, yeah, maybe she's a catalyst. I think she is. And I, I think it would be a beautiful thing too, because again, that would all come back to the infinity stones because the infinity stone created Wanda. Wanda would essentially create or unlock the mutant gene in everyone in that universe. Um, so again, the infinity stones continuing to wreak havoc across the world, um, showing how big of a threat uh, they actually were in the first place. I think that's brilliant, man. Uh, now, go ahead. I wanted to say one more thing. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. Any, did anybody realize this? Loki in Endgame grabbed the Tesseract and went to his own portal. The Tesseract is back. Oh, that's true. Wanda recreated oh. Vision with a Mind Stone in her world. Two of the six stones theoretically are back yes. in existence. Yes. You're right. You're absolutely right because they destroyed the stones. But now, theoretically, with what you're saying, at least we know the Tesseract, whether it's a Dude. different universe or not. But we see what they're pulling out. And and that path in Loki, I think, is going to be a very integral path <laughs> for the MCU because yes. he is essentially, uh, you know, behind the scenes. They're, they're sitting there interviewing him and saying, uh, listen, buddy, we're going to need you to. And they described it as a as an undercover, like a heist show mm -hmm, Loki. Mm -hmm. So apparently he is going to be an agent of that organization uh, that is behind how time works and how these different dimensions work, which is so cool, which is so cool. So Loki is back Loki, whether it be in a different dimension or not, we do see Heimdall uh, pull him with the portal. So obviously we're going to get some cameos from other characters, man. I think there is a huge possibility of that show uh, tying in heavily to a, a Spider-Man and Doctor Strange to our super chat here, which I think is a great point to bring up. It's not a WandaVision question, but Doctor Strange opened a portal for another planet from another galaxy like it's nothing and no one is talking about. Now, it, are you referring to... Quicksilver, in game. maybe? Or, or in game. When did he open? Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess you're right. Oh, yeah. It, oh, he wow. opened up. Yeah. Because everybody, everybody essentially was in kind of a, I don't want to call it like a limbo, but everybody's soul or existence was in another realm. Yes. So when Thanos snapped them, they died on Earth, but their existence was somewhere else. And wow. Hulk was the one that had to snap them back. The question is, where is that other else? Where is that other place? We don't know. Because wow. when the portals opened up, if you notice, if you go back and rewatch Endgame, and I've watched this several times in detail, there's a landscape inside of the portals that they're walking through. Yes. So where's that? Where is that? Yeah. Where is that? And that's, you don't think about that because in Endgame, I mean, you know, you get You're the focused moment on with, Thanos. With, yes, you're focused on Thanos. You get Wanda, you get Captain Marvel coming in, but Doctor Strange is literally just bringing everybody in. And like it's nothing. And you yep. see how many portals they are opening up. Now, the other uh, the other sorcerers come in as well, right? But it's him. It's just him at first he, opening now, up all those portals. And he's the one that brought back the heroes. Now, theoretically, the heroes could have manifested exactly where they left. And he yeah. literally is bringing everybody back from that point to where they were. You know, because Spider-Man, he died on Titan. Uh, and he's coming essentially. swinging in. And yeah. so maybe Spider-Man's portal is from Titan and he's swinging in from, I don't know. It, 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 there, oh my God, my head's just like, I can't go. Oh, I'm good. There's a lot, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack because you could go back and watch in game a thousand times and focus on a different character at the end there. So, you know, the fact that, and this is a great, uh, Lilac with the super chat, the fact that strange did that and no one's talking about it. Now we had his fight against Thanos in infinity war, which was 
baller. I mean, it was mm. awesome. But then he's doing all this, bringing all of our heroes back in Endgame, which just completely blew all of our minds. So I think it's a great point to bring up. Uh, Jassy Jones says, Pietro uh, Hayward, we'll talk about Hayward here in just a second, and Agnes, <laughs> I don't really trust. Darcy could turn into a character uh, from Two Broke Girls since 2010's is next. Oh my God, <laughs> I didn't even think about that because she's in Two Broke Girls. Uh, the 2000's references, I love it. Yeah, Joe, if you don't mind, I'm going to run to the bathroom like super quick. Yeah. Could you talk about the just this this last episode, the Malcolm in the Middle, the 2000s, yeah. the the idea of them kind of pulling from yeah. that decade, and I'll be back no, in like all good. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're fine, man. No, I thought that the, the 2000s episode was really great because it did kind of harken back to that. You know, you see transition from the 80s and from the 90s. The 80s was very specific. Uh, but you get, you know, kind of like that one scene where they're talking directly at the camera. And when they're talking directly at the camera, it's almost like first person point of view on a sitcom. And it, it is very Malcolm in the Middle-ish where they would break the fourth wall, the character on the show, and just start talking directly to the audience. Uh, I love that. And also to that moment, we got some pretty crazy uh, lines from Pietro. And he just kept asking some very strange questions and some very strange things. And so I, 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 I'm looking over here at uh, Jassy's uh, comment. Pietro Hayward and Agnes, I don't really trust them. Uh, I don't really trust them either. I, I, Pietro, to me, he's got the memories of the Ultron Pietro, but at the same time, oh my gosh, there was that one scene where she looked at him and you could see the bullet holes, and I'm just like, what is going on here? Is 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 that Ultron Pietro, or is this a different Pietro that's trying to play games with her mind? What's going on? And Hayward, dude, I'm telling you, Hayward, you know, in the first time we saw him, he was okay, but this last episode, specifically, it's just like he he wanted – Hayward wanted to get rid of, of Wanda. He wanted to take her out once and for all, and I just could not understand that. I was like, all right, so why – you know, we've got all this military outside. You've got the base set up, and you've got all your scientists, and they're working hard. Why just want to take her out in one shot? Why do that? And so a lot of that just doesn't make sense to me, and, and, and I think – uh, maybe, maybe Hayward is being controlled by by Mephisto or this power at B as well. He's part of the the plan. I don't know. You're Max Media, but sorry, <laughs> I had to, man. It, I had no. to go really, really bad. I had Dude, to go really bad. So least, I'm sorry about at that. At least you had. At least you muted. You know. <laughs> yeah, so you, you didn't hear my you didn't hear my sizzles, but didn't so hear. I think you brought up a couple. <laughs> you brought up a couple, a couple of things. Things. Look, man, we're we're blood related. We're gonna get weird on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you brought yeah, up yeah. a lot of great things when you talk, man. So the idea of Pietro having Aaron Taylor Johnson's memories, but not only his memories, right? When Wanda looked, she saw the bullet holes that happened to Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. So my question is: Is he actually recast now? Again. He was saying some weird things. There were some comments in there, especially when he looks at her at the end, right before she blasts him. And he says, uh, your husband, what do you say? Your husband died twice. Is he going to die again? And I'm just like, whoa, 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 dude. That is not okay. Whoa. Was that, her brother, dark. was her brother ever that rude, that mean? I mean, maybe I'm not remembering, no, but her, her brother was very compassionate. Um, was, I, I think, right? you know, in, in Ultron, he, he, he never had a snarky demeanor like that. And, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. That is, it's the strangest thing. I cannot put my finger on his character. I, I just can't. I mean, I, I think he's an antagonist. I don't think he's yes. a catalyst for the next men, you know, because, you know, everybody's familiar and we're bringing in a familiar character and an actor and all that stuff. And, and you know, everybody's like, oh, great. You know, hey, it's him from, from X-Men First Class, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I think it, – it, the director is playing with our familiarity of characters from other expanses. That's good. And I, I think now that, that he's using that to kind of as fuel essentially to throw us off. Yeah. Uh, that's really good, man. I, I think it's, it's almost the concept of let's throw them something that they think is one thing, sleight of hand, almost look over here while in the background, this mm. weird, uh, again, we go back to Mephisto, this weird stuff is at play here, and maybe that's not the character that you think that he is. Now, they could also pull the same thing with Agnes, right? We all know at this point that Agnes is Ag Agatha Harkness in the comic books, but is she actually the evil player that she think we think she is? 
or is she someone kind of going back and forth on both sides? What do you think about Agnes, Joe? I think Agnes is being controlled. I think that uh, we, I kind of saw that in this last episode, she wanted to snap out of it and Avenger didn't even know he was an Avenger. And she's like, mm. Oh my God, your vision. Yeah. You're one of yeah. the Avengers. And he's like, what's an Avenger? He don't even know who he is. He has no clue. But a weird thing I noticed, I went back and rewatched it. In the uh, the the community scene during the Halloween part, there's one character in particular that has this weird demonic face. And everywhere Wanda moves, that face is following. Have you have you seen that? Now, which scene is this again? I don't think I have. Okay, there is it's 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 weird long face. I, I would try to see if I could pull it up here to show you. But there is a character in the background. Everybody's just kind of doing their own thing. But then there's this character in a black cloak and this long nose and long chin, and he's just watching. Wanda. Interesting. And I wow. that that was a weird one that I was like, okay, what's that all about? I'm gonna try to pull it up to see if I can find yeah. it, but no guarantees. Um, but oh, I did man. see it. I, I mean, I may have oh. to go on the episode and screenshot it right quick. Um, oh man. But yeah, I didn't notice it. Well, that so that is almost, you know, the character is there. He's yeah. watching. He's he's pull again. It comes back to you know someone's in the background pulling the strings, and it's funny because you go back to Age of Ultron. There's no strings on me. Well, it looks to me like there's some strings on everybody in this town, but there's also some strings, maybe one or two on Wanda, which completely blows my mind when you think of you know, how everyone is convinced that it's all Wanda at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure there, there are a few fans here and there that are thinking, maybe it's not all Wanda. Maybe we have another figure at play here. And with what you're saying, Joe, was that figure actually in the episode? It's interesting to go back and think about all of these details throughout the episodes, right? It um, is. Because, and I'm reading some of these chats right now and everybody said, y'all making a lot of sense, man. It's, and again, it's in this scene. When okay. it's it's daylight and she's outside, there's a character directly behind her. I'm trying to find it, but it's oh, the creepiest man. dang thing I've ever seen. Well, but, that's. Um, but the question is, Joe, who is that? Is that Mephisto? Is that someone else? Now, I, I remember one be, of the it episodes. It could be sword. It it could absolutely be an agent watching, and maybe we'll get that out outside perspective. Now, one of the episodes I can't even remember the name of the villain. Uh, in one of the intros. There was a tease, and if one of you guys watching can remember, there was a tease for another villain. Uh, dude Sauce says, y'all reaching right now. Listen, man, that's what this is all about. If we ain't reaching, what are we doing? That's what this is all about. It's all about theories and speculation. So we're, we're, we're going to reach as far as we can reach. I'm going to jump up into the sky. Uh, somebody said 3C Films is better. Listen, man, 3C Films is like my best bud on YouTube. So you can go. I'll, I'll text him and tell him you said that. But listen, <laughs> there are a lot of <laughs> stupid there are a lot of there, there yeah here we go so this is perfect thank you charmed original nightmare joe are you familiar with the character of nightmare because apparently his helmet his helmet was in one of the intros for i believe episode three right so could yes. nightmare be a part of this nightmare could very well be a part of this and uh you know that it it it, it that was the other person part that I was talking about. It could not be Mephisto. We could be sidetracked. We could be literally being played here to think because everybody, you know, Kevin Feige and crew have a way of playing with us because everybody knows Ken. Mm. So we're bringing our encyclopedias and our, and our cards and everything that we know to the table here. And we're following Canon, but we all know, also know some things in the MCU doesn't necessarily follow Canon. And so that's that nightmare could easily, easily be a part of this. And he is a what very, about the what about the Grim Reaper, Joe? Because it's oh, so much thing that was I actually the Grim Reaper's helmet. I found it. Look right there. See that guy? Okay, first of all, that is terrifying. <laughs> Here, let me zoom, <laughs> let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. But this character follows. But look, he's the only one that doesn't have like a fake 80s mask. He has got a, and, and so Wanda is here looking, if you look at the per peripheral shot, and he just kind of watches her and stares at her while everybody else is doing their own thing. So everyone else is kind of looking elsewhere and kind of go standing, and, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hmm. Go back and rewatch and see that guy. I mean, who so is it's definitely, that guy? Well, it's definitely <laughs> somebody, I'd like to know who what the face is. Yeah, it's definitely a costume, but who is in the costume? That's the question. Right. Is someone actually there 
right? It kind of, and maybe later we'll see, yeah, we got these theories. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Hey, we'll do it, man. We'll do it. We'll keep the <laughs> theories coming. Uh, but I, listen, I think if anyone is allowed to theorize, it's Joseph because he actually has, you have a, uh, you're certified in comic books, right? I can't say that. I, I can't say <laughs> I'm certified. So I think we're allowed to theorize like that, man. Um, <laughs> so, As they uh, say, yeah, you guys brother, should, where are thou? I'm bonafide. He bonafide, baby. Uh, you guys should watch new rock stars Easter egg videos. I actually have watched most of those. Yeah, so there and there, but there are still going to be Easter eggs that we'll come back to in these episodes after it's all said and done. Like just last night, rewatching episodes one through three with my friend, uh, mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of things that kind of, you know, originally watching it, I, I probably could have been like, oh, this is where it's going. But let's be honest. Nobody knows where it's going. All we can do is sit here and kind of pull out a, a, a lot of these hints and teases that we're getting. Uh, anyone notice the water tower? It's in all the intros in sequence, was lit up during the Halloween episode and placed under Central Cafe. Ooh, Cerebro. Oh, now that would be fascinating. Well, you know what else is funny, Joe? If you go back to the first X-Men, the whole idea of this, of this bubble, <clears throat> right, kind of, overtaking everything in its path is exactly what Wanda's doing with the hexagon. But it also really reminds me of X-Men one when, uh, they have rogue and Cerebro is kind of doing the exact same thing when Magneto's trying to turn everybody into mutants. That's what yes. it reminds me of, right? It, it is very similar in storyline. And yeah. I, I do, uh, you know, yes, absolutely. A thousand percent Cerebro. I mean, you know, we could be having, we could be having something hearkening back to where we need to have Cerebro on the scene to be able to control Wanda. Yes, that, that um, would be but, fascinating. But here's something, too, a lot of people are not talking about, and I'm bringing this up only on your show. Why are all the commercials in WandaVision yeah. tied to Infinity Stones? Each one has been a different stone. Yeah, I, I I've even like I've I saw a video on it, but it's even like once you think about it, every stone has a different power, a different and and we know that obviously she has a huge connection to the Infinity Stones. But and Lin, Lindsay is in the chat says literally just watched X one last night. That's funny, but every stone means something different and has a different connection. So if you go back to all of the commercials, right, you're going to see that each commercial may tie in to a different stone. I think that's really yeah. cool. And especially, you know, the one we saw this past week on six with death. Um, I, th I thought that was a, a great one on, on infinity stones. But I mean, I know that's a long, uh, a really big stretch and we're probably looking yeah. pretty deep there. But at the same time, remember what I just said? The power stone is in play. Um, and also the Tesseract w uh, is in play. The, the power cube, the power stone. Uh, so yeah. We got two stones back in existence, theoretically, in multiple different dimensions, probably, thanks to Loki. But yes. they're there. And in WandaVision's world, the Power Stone is very much alive and well. I, I completely agree with you. And, you know, there are some things that we still have to get answers to, right? But I do think the Infinity Stones will continue to weigh heavily in this show. I really do. And you said earlier... You know, and we're still trying to. I think the next thing we need to talk about, Joe, is, and I love what Adrian said, by the way. It's called Full House of M, which I think is Full House of M. I love that. Of M. Um, yeah. But I, so my next question is, Joe, so we saw that vision when he went outside of the hexagon, that mm -hmm. he was really, I mean, essentially he was about to die, right? Mm -hmm. So he can't exist outside of that. Now, um, I think it was my mom. I was talking to my mom. My mom said, why doesn't Wanda just put a, a hex outside of one house and keep vision alive there forever. She said, that would be so much more simple. And I'm like, mom, that's actually a really good point. But <laughs> I know Marvel's not going to keep things that simple. But my question to you, Joe, is so is there a way vision survives this, right? Because we know he has to be in there to survive right now. But is there a way he survives this beyond that? The only way he can survive is if Wanda uh, makes her hex across the entire planet. <sighs> I don't think I don't think you know she he is a she's basically using a corpse as a puppet to recreate him into a life life filled being uh, is walking around and talking and and interacting um, beyond this realm of make believe um, is is reality 
And yeah. so in when when you cross the threshold and the barrier, you're crossing from, you know, make believe into reality. And Vision can't live in reality, in our reality, because in our reality, he was an Avenger and he died in in, in the Infinity War uh, movie. Uh, so you, you think about all that into play. Um, the only way he could live and actually be a part of Earth and, and be a part of a team again is if Wanda, her, her somehow, her mind uh, expands the hex and, and creates a hex around the entire globe. Uh, that would be the only way. And so if she does that, I mean, who's to say? I mean, we've been talking about that pretty heavily on this show is expanding it to the entire Earth. Um, and it, it would open up a lot. It would open up a lot of doors. It would open up multiple dimensions. It would open up mutants. It would open up uh, potential for other people like individuals that are in Wanda's world to live in the full world. And yes. so that would – dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's some trippy crap when you start really unpacking it all. Mide says, was that a spoiler? I mean, we, my, this is all speculation. Clearly we don't really know anything. This I don't is know. The whole, yeah. The, the whole reason behind this live stream, I think this is a beautiful place for all of us to come down and, mm -hmm. and, and speculate. And I've seen some great, I mean, you guys have brought some incredible theories into the chat and you're, you're opening up and I know, you know, we've got the comic book guy and, 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 and myself, you know, who've been invested into this, but you guys have shown some awesome theories so far. And I just want to give a shout out to you. Uh, and, and again, I, I appreciate everybody for joining. We have another super chat, um, from Shanners 1981, who says Pietro showed up as the WandaVision fight about reality was happening. A plant to put Wanda back in grief mode, to stop wondering how this started. Joe, what do you think about that? Every time somebody asks her how this started, even Vision, she 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 doesn't really give a definitive answer. She doesn't know. It's like everything, she woke up from some sort of trance and she's automatically in this world and she's yes. believed that this world is her reality. And mm -hmm. in that, um, you know, uh, Shanners, I mean, uh, yeah, you are spot on with, with yeah, that. I, I agree. And I, I think that um, Wanda is being manipulated. We don't know how she got into this world in Westview. And obviously the residents of Westview are in, in, in excruciating pain. Uh, we saw the one ep uh, uh, the one scene where tears coming down one of the neighbors' face because she's just yeah, yeah. in this perpetual motion nonstop and she can't break the cycle. Um, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's twilight zone ish in a way. And, uh, you know, getting back to the spoiler comment, no, I don't know anything. I mean, I'm just speculating what, what, what could happen to for yes. other things to happen. And so I want to let you guys know, I don't know anything about any, any of that. I'm just hypo hap hypothesizing. Hypo is that a word? Um, yeah. speculating, speculate. Uh, I'm just speculating basically on what, what I know, uh, based off the comics. Now, the beautiful thing here, you know, we're talking spoilers. I could be totally wrong on all of this. Yes. And I would be perfectly fine with that. I would be perfectly fine with that. Actually, that would be awesome. That would be the best thing if I was completely wrong and we were totally, totally sidetracked and something even better was coming down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's the beauty of a show like this is nobody actually knows where it's headed, but we can, you know, and, and the only things we can really pull from are the Easter eggs and the episodes and the comic books, which I, I think you've done a great job of today. Uh, but yeah, and exactly, you know, Marvel has given us all of the clues and now I think it's just time to sit down, strap ourselves in and, and get ready, man, and get ready because there is a lot coming down the pipeline. We have Dawn, i.e. I follow from my water tower theory. Agnes said she wanted dark liquid is the water controlling light liquid. Is it Magneto, Charles, and Cerebro? Interesting. I, I don't. Agnes said she wanted dark liquid. I may have missed that part or I just overlooked it. So is something in the <laughs> There's something in the water in Westview, Joe. What is she it? Be, she could be just referring to a cup of coffee, too. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, you know, it's funny because I belong to several Marvel Cinema Universe groups on Facebook. Yeah. And the people are literally framing, pausing this show on every frame, trying to pull something from it. And they're so desperate. I love it. it, it it's so easy. I mean, I love the energy. But it's so, I mean, some of them, I'm just like, really, dude, what, what, what are you doing? I mean, you know, it's just so <laughs> far left field. 
Like, you know, it, it's, it makes no theoretical sense at all. It has no tie into anything. But um, <laughs> don't be one of those people and get caught up into the tropes of, of, of the hype. Uh, the hype is good when you're when you're when you're speculating, but when you're actually pulling things out of your butt, it's not fun. Uh, but I'm just like, well, really? It's one of those things, you know, Man. smash my head, smash my head, smash there, my head. There's um, there's a lot, which you know, uh, honestly, I've I we could probably be doing something similar, but I th- it's just like you know, what's the what's the the paint on the wall signify and all of that stuff. Like there are things I think you can go too far. We've got oh the, yeah. But we got some chats going back to who that cameo is, which we I think we could talk a little bit more about here in just a second. And we'll, mm-hmm. we won't go too much longer, guys. We're going to wrap up uh, probably around the hour 10, hour 15 mark. Um, we got Milo with the with just the super chat. Thank you, Milo. I'll be on the lookout for a question. We've got a black gay comic geek says, Wanda got to go to jail. <laughs> Wanda got to go to jail, y'all. Got to go to jail. Got to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, listen, up. she's... Look, we and we don't know who exactly kidnapped. I mean, it's Wanda, right? She kidnapped everybody, right? Hypothetically. <sighs> yeah, Wanda may have to go. <laughs> That's not good, Joe. That's not good. Uh, Mike says, did Wanda steal Vision's body of her free will? So, well, I think Hayward did Wanda doing... do this under yeah, her I... own power? I think that's the question. I think she probably did. I think, okay. I, I, I think, uh, you know, her love uh, for, for vision um, was, it, it was very tangible in the mill in the movies when we saw that, especially where they were in the Scotland scene in the opening of infinity war. Um, I think uh, it, yeah, it, it's, it's very plausible because I'd say somebody probably tipped her off that Hayward was doing experiments because let's be real. Vision's entire body is vibranium and one of the most sought after precious metals in the entire MCU. And so mm-hmm. why wouldn't you not want to experiment on something that's never been in, in existence before? He is a being that was literally created from an infinity stone and Tony Stark and, and, and Bruce Banner's knowledge to, to create something, an artificial intelligent being that had never been in existence in the universe before. Why would you not want to experiment on something like that? So she probably found out about that and went and gra- grabbed his body. But somewhere in that transition where she was wanting to try to maybe have a moment of solace and try to have resolve uh, with with the corpse of vision and maybe put to rest that memory, she may have got attained by something and found her grief to be a power to create something even more destructive. <sighs> That's really... I mean, that's good, man. There's also there's also this theory going around that I, I think is also fascinating. You know, Hayward could be Hydra and they could be wanting to recreate Ultron. Oh, crap. Yeah. Someone said, and I don't know if it's true, someone said that um, James Spader um, was not... Uh, or did not show up to an episode of the blacklist because he was, he had prior engagements. And apparently that was around the same time that WandaVision was filming. So could all, I, I mean, this is a reach. Dude, dude that is, this a is a reach and a half, but, but can you imagine having Ultron back on the scene and, and Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. That would be insane. Well, and by do them way, a bit because I freaking love Ultron by the way. I see. I do too, and I think not that he was done a disservice in that movie because I th- still thought he was good. I, I could have used more from him, to be honest. It would be the ultimate like, let's bring him back and maybe do it a bit better. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be like, kind of like they're doing with um with what's his name from from Iron Man three, the Mandarin. I, I, they're trying him again in Shang Chi. Yeah. It's like, could they be doing that again with Ultron? Again, I think that may be a bit of a stretch, but I have seen that theory. Kind of, kind of float online. Well, I think the Mandarin in Iron Man three was, you know, we obviously know the Ben Kingsley character was nothing more than a ruse. Yes. But the idea of the rings, uh, the, you know, the five rings, the Mandarin rings, uh, yes. was an ideology that came directly from Chang Chi, and so they were just creating something. That, you know, you, you you talk about Slender Man, and you see some dude in a vacant field walking around a Slender Man, as you know, like, <laughs> what was going on. Um, but you know, you're you're talking about you know powers that be and and Hydra and stuff. You you got to talk about Baron Zemo as yes. well and and his connection in with Hydra and also with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. 
uh, there's a huge connection there, and it's all going to be. I would be, dude. That'd be crazy. If Ultron did come out. Now, is it is it plausible? Probably not. I think that story has yeah. been told realistically. Yeah. But what if they create something far more sinister mm. out of that? So, you know, that's another possibility. And clearly with Zemo's presence, we know that that entire, even if it's not technically still Hydra, I, I think that entire evil organization is still very much at play in the MCU. And, and well, I'm interested even in to see the what happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. With, yeah. Hydra yeah. Soak. Yeah, of Hydra course. Soak, yeah. Dealing dealing with her past trauma. So I would love to see Hydra come back in, uh, you know, whether it be this show or Falcon and Winter Soldier. By the way, Joe, where's your, real quick, uh, before we get back into WandaVision, where's your hype on, on Falcon and Winter Soldier right now? Are you excited for that show? I'm really excited for that show. And it, it seems like a dynamic duo that shouldn't be, that doesn't want to be, but is forced to be. And yes. I kind of <laughs> like, I kind of like that going into it, that these two characters really have no interest in being together, but, there's something in play and they got to stop Baron Zemo uh, from pretty much doing, I mean, he's an extremely intelligent guy. Just reading yeah. off his card, it says the current Baron Zemo, let me rephrase that. The current Baron Zemo uh, began his criminal career after his father, the original Baron Zemo perished in a battle with Captain America. Now this is Canon, a brilliant strategist and tactician. Zemo has sworn to his use his military cunning to destroy the Star Spangled Adventure. And uh, so there you go. Um, and, and we saw that uh, in that trailer, we saw, so you put the puzzle pieces together. I know this is a different show. It's not WandaVision, but you see Baron Zemo walking with Falcon and Winter Soldier. So clearly they're working together for something. Is it to destroy this new Captain America played by Wyatt Russell's character? Uh, that's, that's my question. I think I think there's going to be uh, some kind of like uh, what you call it, some kind of terrorist thing or something going on, and the the, the secret uh, what is it called the secret agent is going to have to be uh, called in in the military because there's no more Steve Rogers, and um, I think that they're going to figure out well you know Falcon and Winter Soldier can carry the mantle of Steve Rogers yeah. uh, very efficiently and very well as a team, and so I think there's going to be a huge power. Uh, there's going to be some kind of like terroristic type power that's going to uh, probably impact the world or something like that um, along those lines. Um, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a direct. It may not maybe be a direct tie end with WandaVision, but I doubt it. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited for that show, too, man. I think there's a lot at stake with that show. I think we could see General Thunderbolt Ross back, possibility of the Red Hulk making an entrance. Um, I'm rooting for the Red to, Hulk, for sure. I am, too, man. And I know you're a big, he's like the world's biggest Hulk fan. So, dude, that would be a, a dream bit. come <laughs> true. I mean, I mean, a little bit, you know. Just, <laughs> just, just, just a tiny just, bit, Joe. Just a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Joe, I got a great question here from Eduardo. Uh do you think Wanda? Do you think Wanda has to die for everything to return back to normal? Hmm. I don't think she has to die. I think that she has to real get a grasp grasp with reality. I think hmm. that somebody is going to have to jerk her and snap her back out of this fictitious world that's been created for her, or she's created it within herself. Um, yeah. I don't think she has to die. I mean, yeah, that's an easy trope to follow. That's an easy storyline. Let's just get rid of Wanda and we get rid of the whole thing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But, you know, I foresee Wanda Maximoff being an ongoing part of the MCU, especially in Spider-Man 3, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. You got all these characters that can control these these realities and, and the psych psychosis powers. And then with the um, the introduction of mutants, um, yeah, you know. That 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 could be a big thing too, and her and Quicksilver, brother and sister, leading the mutant brigade essentially. Oh. So yeah, I mean, I don't think killing her is a would be a chicken way out at this point. There's so much story there to be unpacked. You don't want to do that to a character. Yeah, and I don't think she dies either. I mean, obviously she doesn't die now because she's in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. But even beyond that, I think it it's according on whether or not they play her because we still don't technically know if she is the villain of that movie or if she is the hero. I personally think she's going to be the villain. I think maybe she goes a bit crazy at the end of WandaVision, whether it be something happens to her kids like in the comics or something happens to Vision. 
like in the comics, a different comic, but there are a lot of different routes they can go, but something, and she's been set off, right? But something yeah. needs to further that to make her what we know from House of M. And my question is, what's that going to be? Or does she just progressively get worse throughout this show? And we've seen that already because the bubble expanded. What do you think, Joe? There's an antagonist. There has to be an antagonist, something that's going to trigger her. And yes. um, I think it's only going to escalate further and it's going to get worse and it's going to get into more of the house of M Scarlet witch that we all know it, very uh, ruthless and, 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 you know, just crazy off, off the rails type Wanda Maxima. Um, yeah. And I think that it's going to take someone like, you know, seems strange to be able to come in and rewrite the course and, and, and do it right. And he's the only, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of Benedict Cumberbatch in the years to come in the MCU. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I would not be surprised with the Doctor Strange cameo at the end of the show. I don't think that is the big cameo we're waiting on, but I would not be t surprised. They're going to bring him back just to show that the Earth is doomed with a... And that's a great point. Um, I think, you know, and I don't know if the Earth is doomed without Tony Stark, but there is a real heavy lack of Tony Stark right now, Joe, mm -hmm. that it, it is going to weigh on the Avengers. Oh, I guess and Captain America, Techn uh, yeah. Steve Rogers, right? So what? what's the Avengers, what is that universe going to look like without these two characters? Because this is the first we're seeing of it past Spider-Man. Yeah, and we only have three brilliant minds currently in the MCU. Uh, Bruce Banner, Peter Parker, and uh, let's see, wait a minute. I, got, I had the other Shuri. one here. Shuri, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. So we've got those brilliant minds, but it's going to take another brilliant mind, a.k.a. For, uh, Reed Richards, to come in and, and be able to create an open door catalyst uh, to, to really expand into the cosmos. And yeah. I think that's where we're going. I mean, Marvel has been on earth for this long. We've been, you know, Wakanda and Sokovia and all these places. Now it's time to go to the Eternals realm and, and explore mm. all that in the cosmos where Silver Surfer, Galactus and um, uh, the Eternals rest. Uh, and reside. And, 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 you know, I think it's all going to be going to that. I know that's really far down the road, but um, yes. I think there, there's going to have to be some cataclysmic thing that's going to happen with Wanda Maximoff that's going to trigger her. And I think it's going to be the, the, the body of minds that are in existence as we speak uh, that are going to be coming back and, and joining forces to create. Uh, and then we can't, we can't rule out Fury and Shield too, because he's definitely a team player uh, with the Avengers. Uh, he's pro Avengers and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's going to be very interesting to see how all that un un unfolds. Uh, Black Gay Comic Geek says Riri Williams is coming. She's another brilliant mind. Interest? Yeah, you're. I mean, there are Riri Ironheart. Yes, yes, yes. There's there are a lot of shows, and and this is why I think it's important. Uh, you know, just talking about the more casual Marvel fans, like my my friend who was over last night. This is why I think it's important to keep up with the shows as well as the movies. And I know it's sometimes it's almost like homework because there's so much, but Ironheart is going to really make an impact in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I personally think they're setting up for the Young Avengers with all of these mm. characters. Like, I think uh, Ant-Man's daughter. I think, uh, you know, obviously we have Hawkeye and you have, uh, you know, there's just a, there, there's a lot. And yeah, man, listen, there's there are a lot of uh, of smaller characters that could come. And I think this is going to be Disney Plus's culmination um, like they did in the movie universe with the Avengers. This will be Disney Plus's version of the Avengers, the Young Avengers. So I think that's the perfect way to introduce them. Uh, Mike says real quick, Vision Corpse into Doomsday. Boom, DC crossover. <laughs> I like it. I like the, the <laughs> that would be interesting. Listen, I th there is so much Marvel right now. I just want them to stay two separate entities because there's a lot on both sides. Joe, go ahead. Um, I just, just, on a whim, something just told me in the handy-dandy Marvel encyclopedia, look up that. Nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. Let's yeah. look up Nightmare and see what he, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we referenced that earlier in the show. Nightmare, who has battled Doctor Strange, is the ruler of the nightmare world within dimensions of dreams, where the life essence of humans is brought while they sleep. Nightmare monitors the collective unconscious of humans and can manipulate the dreams of an individual, giving them nightmares to gain control of that person. Nightmare wow. is a creation of the human need to dream. If humans did not have this need, or if all humans vanished, nightmare would cease to exist. His ultimate goal 
is to incorporate the waking world into his own domain. Now, who's Man. to say that Nightmare couldn't be the big bad? There's so uh, that is possible. You know, everyone's riding the Mephisto train. I think at this point, you and I are, are. Are you on board with Mephisto showing up, Joe? At this point, I would need one more episode to probably calculate to, to figure it out. I mean, we have the kids. The kids uh, essentially are, are canon are fragments of Mephisto's soul. Um, yeah. I don't know how that came to be or how that's going to be talked about in the show because right now it's everything's just kind of very safe. You know, yeah. they're they're not they're not deep diving deep diving into that. Um, so if they're not deep diving into that at this point, and we're getting ready, what is this episode seven coming up this week? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we're only three away. What is it? Ten or nine? Well, I so the, it it is nine confirmed. There's a rumor going around that there's an extra episode. I don't know if I buy that yet, but right now nine is confirmed to be the to be the final tally. Okay, interesting. Um, well, if that's the case, we only have three more left, and so they're going to have to start this next episode. is going to have to really start unpacking some major yeah. heavy hitter stuff to start start setting up the final two episodes. And so um, I don't know. I think we're going to be. Out, I, I don't know. Is it Mephisto? I don't know. Is it Nightmare? I don't know. Is it Hayward being controlled by something? I don't know. Yeah. I, it's it's there is a lot of stuff. But you know, the good thing about this show is we we actually put all the possibilities out there, and hopefully one of them will come to fruition. And we should know more this week. You're right, man. We are so close to the end. If they don't introduce Mephisto this week, I might I might not be on board with that anymore. Because how do you do that in two episodes? How do you do that? You, well, Mephisto's a huge player, dude. He is one of the – he's a crazy supervillain with some crazy powers. And if they aren't setting him up – you all right, let, let's go back to Jessica Jones. Yes. And uh, you remember uh, – let's see, what was uh, the, the villain there in Jessica Jones? The Purple Man. And he, yeah. he, he controlled and mani mani manipulated Jessica. Oh, but we started, yeah. Similar. But we – yeah, we started figuring out who he was by episode three. Episode four – in Jessica Jones. And so we don't know what's going on here at this point. I don't know what to believe at this point. I don't know who yeah. is the villain. That's, that's a good, it's a great point, man. Purple man, and Jessica Jones, very similar controlling her, making her do things. I, it, clearly a different, well, is it, do we get a Jessica Jones? I, I think we do. I still think we're, I, I think Daredevil's coming. I think Jessica Jones is coming. <laughs> um, Josh says, do you, do you want to see Evan Peters play Mephisto and Nightmare? And, and and we've talked about how Evan Peters may not be the character that we know. And it is a, a heavy possibility that he is not the Quicksilver um, either version uh, of that character. And Black Gay Comic Geek says, only ones we're missing from the Young Avengers is Patriot. Iron Lad and Hulking. Uh, we've got Cassie Lang, Kate Bishop. We got the twins. Um, it, we got to age them up a little bit, and which I think they will. And maybe we'll get Kid Loki. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a heavy possibility that Young Avengers starts uh, making its way into the Marvel universe over the next couple of years. That would be so crazy. Let's see. Let's see. We got Eduardo here with the super chat. How would you guys react at the actual OG X Men appearing in the final episode, similar to the ending of season three? of gift of the gifted. Oh, oh Joe. Shoot. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, if you Jackman walked on scene, I'd probably have a massive heart, a coronary heart attack <laughs> right there. Uh, I don't know if I could handle it. But there is rumors that, that Hugh is, is in training right now. Yeah. 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 I saw that. I saw I, that. And I, we don't know what for, and he's already said he wouldn't come back, but eh, it's looking pretty good for Deadpool three right now. Uh, but uh, I, I don't, I, man. If OG X Men just like there's a there's a Doctor Strange portal and he's doing his thing, you know, and all of a sudden, boom, out come uh, you know Rogue and and Wolverine and Night Nightcrawler and Professor X. I'm like, okay, all right, this is good. I can get on board with that. But man, <sighs> realistically though, is it really going to be that simple? Is it really going to? I mean, no build up, just a boom portal here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Golden Light Pictures talk about the Luke Skywalker level cameo. Look, I, it could absolutely be something of that caliber, but, but, but what Joe just said, for me, you have to build that up specifically a little bit, and they're doing that with the engineer. That's why I think it very well could be Reed Richards. It mm -hmm. could be uh, one of these, maybe more random, and, and I know someone brought up her friend, Monica Rambeau's friend from Captain Marvel when she was young, uh, uh, Talos's daughter. 
is actually yeah. an engineer in their world. So it could very well be her and not a Reed Richards. But for me, you have to give us a tease. You have to give us an Easter egg, something to say, oh my gosh, it's the X-Men. And then when the X-Men come in, but I, I know Ryan Reynolds did go on Twitter and said before, uh, before Fox went under Disney's banner, it was originally going to be a road trip with Wolverine and Deadpool. I mean, honestly, with all this multiverse stuff, I think it could still be that. You just have to switch some things up and say, we're going to another universe. I think that's at, possible, man. At at this point, um, you know, getting back to the Mephisto ideology stuff, and you were just talking about setting up that as the big bad, we're going into episode seven with only nine confirmed. At this point, we should know the villain. Let's let's yes, let's recap. Let's recap. So far, who is the villain? The only villain that we have is Hayward. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know? you're right. I mean, if 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 it's still Hayward after seven episodes, it's got to be Hayward. Yeah. It has. It's got to be. be Hayward. Like he's because the only one I'm actually, wanted. Then yeah, go ahead. I'm actually going to be really upset if they introduce Mephisto like in the last episode. I'm just why, why? Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, 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 yeah. There's no build up to the character. There's no backstory. Uh, there's no direct tie in. You're introducing a character to fans who may not even know who he is without even yeah. giving who. Yeah. That's, I don't know, man, that, that does not seem logical to me. I, I agree. Matt says they said the physicist is a, guy, is a guy. Yeah. We were speculating after the first episode when she mentioned it, that it was possibly a girl because one of the translations leaked, uh, you know, we saw, but no, it, she said he, right. So I believe whether it be blue Marvel, which someone mentioned a bit earlier, uh, and I, I think I talked about that in my video or Reed Richards. I think it's got to be someone uh, amongst that level. Yes. Here's here's something interesting. Kane says letters in Hayward spell out Hydra, H Y D R A. I mean, you're not wrong. Not wrong, I mean, but I mean, again, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a crazy pull. Um, it is, yeah. But um, I, it's pretty interesting. It is interesting. interesting. It is wow. very interesting. I mean, the only yeah, that is a uh, uh, a and a, a w are the only uh, words letters that. What if that was? What if that was unintentional and he is indeed part of Hydra? How crazy would? That, <laughs> how crazy that would, would be that? insane. That would, I that don't would. think anything in the MCU is unintentional. Though. Ooh, Amadeus Cho is that the daughter of Cho from uh, Age of Ultron? Right, Amadeus or? Amadeus Cho is actually the new Incredible Hulk. Uh, he is the, really? uh, I think he, uh, he's the Asian, if I'm uh, backing up on this, um, uh, black gay comic, but if I'm not, mis my, my, he is the, I think in 2015, they introduced a new Hulk into the Hulk first and Amadeus Cho is the new Hulk. Actually, I have so his pop is, vinyl down here. Would he be related to Dr. Cho from, uh, what, that was her name, right? From, from age of Ultron, the, the, the doctor that comes in a little bit. Later, I believe that was her name. Dr. Maybe Cho. I'm wrong there. Yeah, yeah. The one that, she had the a little one. crush on Hawkeye in the movie. And she, yeah, she was she was mind manipulated by Loki to. Uh, yeah. Yes, is yeah, was her name Doctor? Can you guys help me out? Yeah, here we go. Helen Cho is his mother, and she was in Age of Ultron. Dude, Joe, what? what? Joe, what? Joe, what's going on, man? Oh my god. So he like is the Hulk in the comics, the, right? Yeah, Amadeus Cho. Somewhere here, wow. I have the first uh, episode of Amadeus Cho. But Amadeus Cho, he's, he, his hair is very unique. He's kind of got like a fro hawk that goes up in the, in the top. Uh, oh, but wow. he's a, definitely a Hulk character. Well, this is probably something that everybody else knew, and I was just like freaking out about just now. But man, that really genuinely like, okay, cool. That could be a young Avenger. Oh, man, that's great. Oh. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Helen Cho had a crush on Thor. That's what it was. She had a, she had a crush on Thor. That's great. Um, oh, here's a great one too, Joe, before we uh, before we start winding down. Did you guys recognize the kick-ass reference? And do you think Aaron Taylor yes. Johnson, did you recognize that when she said kick-ass in the episode? See, there's Amadeus oh, Cho. There he is. Did so you could, you could tell by his little frohawk. See that? Oh, dude. Now, so. where did you find that picture, Joe? Oh, it just Google Amadeus Cho. 
Dude, that's okay. So legitimately, I, I think that's a very good possibility because why have the character of the show? Amadeus Cho is not a young Avenger, but I mean, if you've got the character of Dr. Cho and his mother <laughs> and his, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you've got, I think you've got to introduce him. And I think what better way to introduce somebody like that than put him in the young Avengers. I, I think that would be, I think it would be awesome. I mean, at this point, you know, they're going with, uh, with, with Jane Foster as the new Hulk. Yeah. Okay, that's very, very comic book heavy. So they're going that route with all these comic book characters. Oh my God, I could speculate on this all day, but yeah, my mind's with, going, I'm starting to get tired from all this. I'm like, oh, dude, there's so much, crazy. man. There's yeah. so much, but the, the last thing we'll talk about here is, um, the kick-ass reference, which I thought was great. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she said, uh, blah, blah, kick-ass, which, was would harken back to the only time Evan Peters and Aaron Taylor Johnson were on screen together. So does that mean that's like a tease of we may get mm -hmm. to see Aaron Taylor Johnson again? I didn't even think about that, but that could be interesting. That was I think it was just a nice nod to their to their canon to other previous comic book franchises. And uh, which I is, love uh, yeah, it, it's which is really nice. I mean, I think Marvel does a great job in, in paying homage to other other properties and franchises and the aerospace engineer could be adam brashear ben Grimm, hank mccoy or reed richards hank mccoy mm -hmm. if we walk if we see beast walk on now if we know that beast helped create the blackbird uh which is the uh the x-men's vehicle of choice because he is an engineer um yeah. so that would not be that that could be one that if we'll see the blue fur that could be crazy we could oh, we dude. could oh man well that's another character you automatically know who they are with the blue fur uh one more here that i think is great so we saw i don't know if you saw these joe there were some leaked there were some leaked spider-man images that had a poster um of missing kids which yes. could still be the blip but it could also be the kids disappearing at the end of wandavision <laughs> so it was so weird, and I kept asking myself, wait, why are there kids in the Halloween episode? Where did these children come from? And I kept thinking about that. I'm like, wait, up until this point, even Vision said, where are the children? There's empty playgrounds, and all of a sudden, we have kids handing out candy, getting candy from, you know. I'm like, what is going on here? Where did these children come from? Are they just activated from, from the sleep? That that's Wanda's created. Oh my God, my yeah. brain hurts so bad. Dude. Somebody, somebody kidnapped some kids, Joe. We're gonna barring any more super chats. We're gonna answer our final question here. If Captain Marvel shaved her head in alliance with Monica Rambeau's uh, mom during can uh, cancer, oh, that's interesting. Wouldn't mm -hmm. she have? Uh, wouldn't she have the short hair she had? So I think this is kind of calling back to was Captain Marvel with Monica's mother? when she died because Monica's not very happy with Captain Marvel right now. And we don't know if that's because I think it's because she just left her as a kid and promised she would come back. She never did. Uh, but she could have very well been there with her when she died. What do you think? Where was Captain Marvel when her mother died? I think there's a great story there that needs to be unpacked. I think that's, um, yes. And there, there's an obvious, uh, disgruntlement with, uh, Monica Rambo's character, um, towards Captain Marvel. Um, and I think that, uh, that story, I, I do feel that maybe in somewhere in the universe that she got, you know, that she knew that her friend and ally in her previous life was getting ready to pass. And maybe there's some hard feelings there. Maybe there's something, maybe Captain Marvel didn't show up to the funeral and that's why she's mm -hmm. hurt. And, you know, because Captain Marvel's out doing her thing in, in other cosmos realms and, and, and stuff. And um, that's could be the hurt is every time she hears the name, she wants her buddy to be there like she was when she was a child. And we all know, yeah. you know, that, that that's a dark, that's a deep story to, to really dive down, but one that could be very plausible. For sure. Yeah. There's a, there's something beautiful to be told there. And I, I think we're setting up a lot of great things for Captain Marvel too, with Rambo's character. We've heard three, I believe three mentions of Captain Marvel now, or, uh, or, or just that world, you know, kind yeah. of what that movie was about in general. So I think that's definitely something they have to come back to. Joe, we've still got some more questions, but hey, <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for everything. Uh, why do they show the commercial? Uh, the kids dying. That's that's something to do with the kids. I'll tell you that much. And, and everybody is still speculating. We got Wonder Man guys. Listen, I can't thank you enough. I, I don't think we have <laughs> any more super chats here, Joe. I'm going to let you go, man, because we have just sat here, unpacked. I mean, there's just, Dude, my we'll head have to is do like, this. we got to do this again, right? 
I've literally, I mean, if you were to see down at my feet, I have encyclopedias, comic books, uh, trading cards from Marvel. I have pulled out everything in my arsenal to bring it to you guys today. And uh, it's just exciting though, that we get to do this. I mean, we are literally yeah. on a show today talking about things that I grew up, you know, enjoying and, 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 and escaping into and world of Marvel. And it's amazing. 25 yeah. years later, here I am as a 41 year old dude, you know, <laughs> and I've got this insane room. Oh, the comic sick. geek. Oh, the cave, the man, the man, man cave. cave. And, you know, I'm 41 years old and we're still geeking out about the very thing, things that I was, I was as a, as an eighth grader, you know, trading cards, uh, you know, in the lockers and stuff in my high school. And that is a pretty cool thing. For Marvel yeah. to create something that creates a discussion where fans can sit here and theorize and talk, that is a beautiful – you can't you can't buy that kind of promotional PR. I agree. And that's the greatest thing, and that's just the legacy that Mr. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and all the great minds of Marvel have created is they created something that keeps us talking, keeps us guessing, and keeps us yeah. wondering. And that's why I keep coming back to it every single time. And it's going to be such a jam-packed year with WandaVision, Falcon, and the Winter Soldier. I mean, back-to-back, -back, we've got Loki. We've got so many things. Hey, guys, if you were here today, um, a couple of things. If if you want to drop a thumbs up on this vid, you know, because it genuinely helps the channel, pushes this out there, and it tells Joe and I that you want, that you'd like to see another one of these. And I, I genuinely, I would like to do another one of these. I think this was so much fun. We will be doing more, though on a little show, and if you showed up a bit late, um, a, a show that we do called Pop X Cast on YouTube. Every two weeks, we talk WandaVision uh, pretty much every single show, and we're just very invested in pop culture over there. It's a great program. It runs about, uh, you know, sometimes an hour and a half, but most of the time an hour, and we're just very heavy into what's going on in the superhero, sci-fi, all of those worlds. So if you guys want to check that out, that would be awesome. Again, Thank you guys for the likes. If you're not subscribed and you want to come back, I'm doing WandaVision Talk every single Friday. I'm reacting to the episodes. Uh, Joe and I will be talking on Pop X Cast. And, of course, um, thank you guys for all the questions today. I did want to hit, Joe, we had one more huge Whoa, super chat. Oh, look yeah. at the super chat. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, one more huge super chat that I had I had to get to. Uh, Wiseman said, Wanda's powers have been shown to manipulate time, matter, space, minds, souls, and raw power. Big bang energy. Oh, my God. We're getting deep. Manifesting the infinity stones in front of our eyes. The commercials foreshadow this. And I think that's yes. a little bit of, of what we were talking earlier, Joe, is, is each commercial has to do with a different infinity stone. So what commercials are we going to see next? And how do they end up tying in to the final three episodes? I'm fascinated to figure out what these commercials are going to be in the final few episodes. I love where Wiseman is going with that. And, <laughs> and you know, you, you literally are echoing everything that we've talked about in this past hour and 30 minutes. Oh my God, hour and 30 minutes. My wife's going to, yeah. but uh, it, it, it's amazing. And, and yes, Wiseman, you are on, you are on board. She's able to manipulate all of these things and create her own reality and rewrite people's DNA. Come on. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Dude, definitely. dude uh, thank you so much for that super chat. That's awesome. What a way to end, man. What a way to end. Hey, guys, be sure to leave your goodbyes. I'll play you out for a few seconds after we're done. Come back next week. We're going to do another Ask Me Anything talk movies. Um, I, I mean, we've went so long, man, and talked so much. There's a lot of great things to unpack. Uh, but really, but really, you can come back this Friday, and we're, we're going to talk more WandaVision, man. I love this show. Joe, love you so much, man. Uh, you know, you're you're one of my favorites to do this with. Tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs. Yeah, man. Find me on the internet, on interwebs, social media at Joseph Burke Arts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those crazy. I'm on all the social media platforms. I'm a live streamer. Also, Austin and I, along with Lindsay Badger and Mike Ippolito, we do a yeah. little show uh, biweekly every other Sunday. This Sunday coming, not tonight, uh, will be our biweekly show. We'll be doing episode 116, where we'll be unpacking more of WandaVision, the last three episodes. So we'll be talking about those exclusively. So uh, follow us at PopXCast, P-O-P-X-C-A-S-T. 
Joe, love you, man. Love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for all the likes. Uh, if you're new, the subscriptions. And, and this was uh, truly one of the coolest live streams I've ever been a part of. And you guys brought some great theories to the table that I think we're going to be able to speculate on uh, for the remainder of the, the last three. And Joe, with the knowledge, man, thanks for seriously, thanks for bringing the encyclopedia because, man, you, you gave us some cool nuggets that I think genuinely tie into the final few episodes. All right, guys, I'm going to play you off. Um, I'm going to put all your comments on the screen. Come back next week, and uh, we going to keep getting nerdy on y'all. See you later. The Birkenauts. That's amazing. Or can they hear us? Are we off the air or what? Let's no, they can, they can still hear us. We're still going. Oh my God, this I'm is, I'm this these. is crazy. Yeah, look, my head let's, is... Let's <laughs> Cameo is Blade. Dude, In I love this. I love the... Uh, the, the look at the Bully <laughs> Maguire references. <laughs> you gonna cry? Oh, we need it. We need it. Now dig on this. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't I gotta end way. this. This has gotta go. Oh this has gotta go. Oh my god. Dude, the cameo is Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine. <laughs> yeah, hey, Joe, let's end on this one. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. That's the oh, best no. one. <laughs> oh no. That's horrible.